Hi crafters! Today I'm going to show you how to do layers and welding in Cricut Craft Room. So today I'm going to be working with the Jasmine cartridge and all I'm going to be doing is actually just writing out the name of the cartridge. So I have my height set at 2 inches because that's what I need for my project. So I am just going to type out the name of the cartridge. And because I'm going to be working in layers, this is just the blacked out background. And I achieved that by just hitting shadow blackout. And then I'm just going to go back and type the top layer, which is just going to be the same thing, just a little thinner. So I accidentally typed two letters that I don't need, so I'm just going to get rid of those. I don't need the A and the S capitalized. So just getting rid of those. And now I'm just going to work with my basic text here, and then I'll work with the shadow next. Shadow wants to come now. <laughs> so I am just moving these letters. And now to weld, as soon as you overlap them, you'll get this pop-up that says weld, don't weld. You're going to select weld because you want them to come together as one piece. Now I'm just bringing them all up just to separate the shadow from the foreground. And now I'll straighten them out. So I'm just going to use this three inch line as my reference here. And you see, as soon as I have each letter selected that I want it to weld, they come together as one piece, as you see here. Now, I'm not going to weld every letter. I'm just going to weld the ones that would naturally be touching. happy with how that looks so I'm just gonna select all I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna kick group because now I want those to be one solid group and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back and I'm going and I'm going to do the shadow here so now what I just do is I just line it up with its respective letter and now I don't want it to weld with this group I'm going to want them to weld together once I get it all set but I don't want I'm not going to select the weld just yet because I don't want it to weld with the foreground And if you see what's happening, this one just automatically welded. It's removing that inside. So you don't want the foreground and the background to weld together, but you're gonna want the background pieces to weld together.
Now I'm just going to move the group off here for a minute. I'm going to go back and select my letters. So those look good. Now I'm just going to go back and click and weld them. Because I want it to be one solid shadow piece. And now I'm just going to select the whole background and I'm going to group that together. And now when I go to cut, I'll be able to layer those two pieces together. Just bring that to the front to show you what I mean here. So when we go to cut it out, this is what it'll look like. It'll be two layered pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. So I am going to cut these out of two different colors. So I'm just moving them to two different sections on my mat. I'm going to go ahead and get my mat set up with these colors that I want to use. So I'm going to use some scrap paper and I'm just going to set it up just the way I have it on my screen. And I'm actually going to have to adjust my screen just to match because my scrap paper goes a little farther than the way I have it set up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll just go ahead and nudge, Oops, accidentally hit right click there. And I'm just going to nudge this over to start at about six and a half. Maybe a little closer to six, because that's where I have my paper lined up. And now my map matches on the screen and in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to cut this. So I'm going to press cut. Now I've purposely left my cartridge out just so you can see what the computer will ask you. So it's saying missing one cartridge. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cartridge in here. And now it's reading that I have the cartridge. So I'm going to hit continue. And now it's going to give me some suggested cut settings. So you can go ahead and click in here and it'll give you all kinds of settings. I already know what settings work for me. But for example, if you change it, it'll change this a little bit. So I already have my machine set to settings work for this particular cardstock because I worked with it earlier today. So I just have my speed is low, so I'm going to bring that up to a medium. My pressure is currently set at a medium, and my blade depth is set as a 3. So now I'm just going to tell it to load my mat. And I did that. Notice I did that on my screen, not on the actual machine itself. And then you're going to hit cut. And we're all set, so I'm going to hit done. And I'm just going to unload from over here and see what we've got.
So I'm just taking off the big piece here. Get my tools out. So you'll see in this outline that it's one solid piece with the exception of this little spot right here. And that's from welding. So now I'm just going to go ahead and piece it all together. Just to give myself a little more space. And what I'm working here is just with a Xyron Create a Sticker, just because it makes life a whole lot easier for me. So I don't have to apply glue, this just applies a sticker backing. And I will post the links for that so that if you'd like to get one, you know where to find it. And you just hand crank it and it pulls it through. Now for tiny pieces like this eye, when I'm working with this machine, I just use my tweezers and I push it all the way into the back of the machine. And I just crank it through. And that just saves me a bit of time with the whole gluing situation. So now what I just do, and you can obviously achieve the same thing just using a glue stick, but this is just faster for me. And then you just piece your puzzle back together the same way you did on your screen. Now you might not be able to see it, but sometimes there's little pieces of adhesive. So right now I see there's a little piece here, a little piece in this indent. There's a couple pieces of adhesive from using the sticker machine that are just overhangs. So they have also sell this handy dandy adhesive eraser. I've also used it for glue sticks. It's actually very handy. And it's just to help remove any excess glue or in my case, adhesive from the machine. And now I'm just gonna apply it to my project here. So this is actually a 3D matchbox. So I've already done a tutorial on how to do these. I will also link that for you. over of my adhesive eraser just because some more adhesive from the shadow layer stuck just to neaten it up and there you have it a layered image made with Cricut craft room and applied with paper <laughs>